Hello there. Welcome to the third installment of my review of the Viwoods AI paper. That's the 10.75 inch uh, e-note taking device. Uh, so in this video, we're going to focus on the battery results that are now complete. So I'll show you how the Viwoods compared to other devices in its class on some key metrics. Then I'm going to go a little bit into uh, some more examples of using AI on the, AI on the device. Um, in a previous video, which is linked in the description, I go into a lot more depth about the AI features, but in this one, I'm just kind of highlighting a few more as an example of how AI integrates well into the note-taking application. So we'll go over that. And then I'm gonna go over a series of things um, that I like and don't like about the device that I can kind of show off visually. This isn't meant to be my final review, that's in the next video, but these are just a few things I thought I would kind of highlight um, before we go into the final review. So hopefully uh, this will be uh, giving a better sense of what the device is and some of its strengths and weaknesses um, before we go into wrapping it up in video number four. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into the battery results. Okay, so here's the results of the battery tests for the Viwoods AI paper. Before we start getting into the actual results, just notice that we've got the Viwoods there in the top row uh, in gray, and then I'm comparing it to all the other devices in the 10-inch class, uh, or the approximate 10-inch class, that I've done the same battery tests on. And for good measure, at the bottom, you'll notice I've included the Viwoods AI paper mini as well. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get to it. So the first category is called standby with the screen off. And this is essentially when the device is kind of on a readiness mode, uh, but the screen is you know, on the wallpaper or sleep mode or however you want to call it. The idea here is that when you open up the cover or you press the power button, the device is ready within a few seconds. Um, I guess the most, um, the longest example would be the Remarkable Paper Pro that takes about six seconds if it's been in that mode for a while. But the point being is just after a few seconds, you can start using the device. So it's not shut off, it's in this kind of readiness mode. And for the Viwoods AI Paper, that rate of drain equated to 0.07% of drain per hour. And as you can tell, based on the other devices, it's not best in class, but it's certainly in the upper half. Just to put this into practical terms, what this means is if you had fully charged the device and you left it in this readiness mode and you didn't use it at all, it would last approximately 60 days until the battery would need to be recharged. It would be fully drained at the end of those 60 days. So that gives you a sense of, of what that means. Let's move on then to standby with the screen on. So this is when the device is on, you can interact with it at any time. Um, and so it takes a little more battery drain because even though the screen itself uh, doesn't require any energy to maintain the e-ink screen, you do have the system running in the background. And for the Viwoods AI paper, that rate of drain was 1.1%. Uh, which is actually kind of in the lower half. Um, it's close to the average, but it is in the lower half of devices on this list and certainly nowhere near the top performers, although there's a sizable difference between this device and the worst performers uh, on the table. If we move on to Wi-Fi, and this is when the Wi-Fi is on, um, but it's not necessarily downloading. In fact, purposefully, it's not downloading while the test takes place. So it's meant to to show the drain of Wi-Fi uh, just by having it on. And for the AI paper, that's 1.3%. So the Viwoods finds itself returning to the top half. Again, nowhere near the best in class, but generally a strong result overall. Because there's no front lighting on the Viwoods AI paper, we'll skip the normal second table of battery tests and move on to the third. And on this one, there's a couple things we measured. We're going to start off with reading and then we'll finish with writing. So in reading, um, normally I'm using the Kobo app if available and then testing how long, uh, you, you know, what the battery drain is just from reading a novel. If Kobo isn't available, then I'll use the Kindle. And that's the case, say, with, the, of course, the Amazon Scribe, um, but that's also the case with the Supernote devices. For the Viwids, they do have the Kobo app, but they have the Kindle app as well. But we tested 
using the Kobo app. And the battery drain here was 1.5%. So again, very similar to previous results in that it's nowhere near the best in class, but it finds itself in the top half of devices and uh, it's even further from the worst in class. So a pretty decent showing. Finally, we'll finish with continuous note taking. And this is basically the, a test where I take notes like a madman for 10 straight minutes. Um, and then I start checking the battery indicator every 30 seconds until the indicator drops down. So that way I get more of an accurate reading. And for this particular test, it's 8% drain, which actually um, is close to best in class. Uh, the scribe is number one at 6.3, but the Viwitz actually finishes in second place on this particular measurement. So overall, how do I summarize the battery results? Um, I would say it's generally solid. Uh, again, nowhere is it best in class, but for the most part, on average, it performs in the upper half, um, and that's good. Most of these devices have pretty good battery life, so the Viwitz does as well. So I created an AI video for the um, AI Paper Mini, and all the functionality really is the same. So if you just want to understand the basics of what AI can do, where it's better utilized in other places, that's all covered in those videos. So I thought I would create this as a supplement just to show a couple additional examples of how you can use AI to integrate with the note-taking application in particular. And to do this, if you click on the AI button, you'll notice there's the ability to create customized queries. And you can create up to five. I've done those here. Um, and basically, now what will happen is that you can uh, click on any of these queries and it will take all the information on that given page and then it will return information based on that. So I thought we would just show some examples of that in action. Now, the way the customized queries work is that you basically title them and then you write a brief description of what you want the query to do. That's pretty much it. You can't edit your queries once they're created, but if you long press them, you do have the ability to delete and of course you could create a new one then in its place. So let's go ahead. I've just written some stuff out here. Steampunk cars, disgraced generals, belligerent mice, just to be fun. And let's go ahead and uh, talk about similar concepts and see what it comes up with. So it's now sending that information on the page to the server and it's thinking about my query and then it's taking all the stuff I've written and it's just writing some ideas that are similar to the things that I've written. Now why did I do this query? So what if I'm doing some creative writing um, I'm thinking of some things, but I, I you know, I want to do something different than what I'm thinking about, but I'm kind of, my mind's stuck. This is an, a way of basically running a query that would come up with ideas that would kind of help me as I'm thinking through moving maybe in a different direction than I'd been moving up to that point. So that was the point of that query. All right, let's go to the next page. Comic book sales. What do I want to know about comic book sales? Well, how about I find resources around comic book sales? So let's go ahead and click on that. It's going to think about it. And just take a few seconds. We're going to run all this live just to see how long it takes. And they, here's a bunch of ideas. So why would I run a query like this? Well, maybe I'm interested in researching an idea deeper, uh, you know, than I had currently. I can then come up with ideas about where do I look next and the chat bot will return some ideas for me to use. So that's the purpose of that query. So here's an example um, that came up in one of my queries. I researched it. They indicated this is a resource. This is for comic books. And I want to know more about this particular one. So I've rewritten it on another page. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I've written one called more. So tell me more about that particular item. I'm going to send it to the chat GPT server. And then it's going to tell me a little bit more about that thing. I'll take a second here, and here we go. So now it's going to it talks about all the aspects of this particular website uh, that might be worth my attention. So those are just a series of examples to kind of show how you can create AI queries that are relevant to you 
that you can then incorporate into the note taking um, things that allow you to you know be more creative and or think around different angles or understand you know what to research uh, next or what directions to go in studying a particular topic. So it's really up to you, you know, how you want to structure the queries. Uh, what's brilliant about the ViWids is this deep level of integration. The fact that you can create your own customized queries. Yeah, they have their own particular uh, items that you can use by default, but you can actually customize those to be much more relevant to types of information that you want. And that's really a brilliant way of incorporating AI into the device. Of course, a more formalized chatbot is always a button press away, thanks to this AI button. Um, and of course, once you do a, any type you, you do one of these AI responses, you can take those responses, copy them, and paste them into notes as well, as we showed in the original visual tour video. I don't necessarily think this is the ideal device for PDFs. Um, there's definitely some limitations. There's The app itself is not particularly powerful, and there are some limitations like pinch and zoom that don't work very well. Let's take a quick look at that. So we'll go ahead and go into this annual e-ink report, and we'll try a little bit of pinch and zoom here. So it, it works, but it's kind of clunky. It's not particularly responsive, um, so I wouldn't even bother doing that. Having said that though, one of the interesting things about this particular screen size, and this is 10.75, as opposed to the usual 10.3 in this category, is that with a slight tweak, PDFs actually become quite readable on this screen. So if I go ahead and go into the system tray, and I go here into the options, the options are limited. But if I just go from one uh, magnification to 1.1, I actually find that PDFs are quite legible. Let's go ahead and flip through this. There's a lot of small print in this particular PDF. Here's a great example. But the screen is just big enough and the contrast is so well done that I can easily read this small text. You can also see how responsive the PDF file is. If we keep moving forward, this is very small text on the original. And even though it's shrunken in, I can read any of this quite easily. So it's pretty impressive. So even though this would not be, you know, a primary reason why you would use this device, um, this is a uh, more than acceptable way of doing PDFs. Like it's, it's not the main reason you use the device, but if you were reading a few PDFs or annotating a few PDFs, you know, a, you know every couple of months or whatever, then this would be adequate for that job. I should point out too, unlike in Remarkable, that you do have the ability to see your annotations. Let's actually go to a document that has annotations. Go to the user manual. And there are the annotations there. So you do have a menu of annotations on the device. If you export this, you do export your annotations but you don't export the indexing of those annotations. So something to be aware of. The annotations can be exported to your computer, but not, not, the, not the quick annotations. One of the issues I have noticed is there is some inconsistency in the drop-down tray. So let's take a look at that. So I'll go swipe down, it'll come up. Let's go ahead and get rid of Bluetooth. So that's once, twice, three times, that's normal. So the fourth time, even though it's the same stroke I did the three previous times, it's not recording that down. Now, how often do you need to bring down the drop down tray multiple times? Not very often, but it is something I encountered, so I wanted to share that. I did find that there was an issue with the device in that some cases it doesn't register one or two of the early strokes if you're just starting to write. Um, once you've done that and you keep writing, the issue seems to go away, but I wanted to at least show and highlight what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to start writing and let's see if we have an example.
Okay, so in this example, the T in this, which I've double underlined, uh, had that issue where I drew the stroke and I kept writing and then the stroke appeared, unlike all the other strokes which captured perfectly. This is uh, not a problem that, again, that would continue. If I kept writing, that wouldn't occur. Uh, it only occurs when you haven't written uh, in a while and then you start writing. So in some ways, it's not a huge issue. On the other hand, though, there are a number of times where you do start writing and you're going to experience the issue. So this is certainly something you will notice when using the device, and that's why I wanted to highlight it. This is an example of how I've been using the Mini. This, of course, is the regular AI paper. I've replicated it here. But I've been using the Mini basically for my weekend chore list. And I've been using the calligraphy pen in particular uh, to list out my chores. I don't do anything special in writing this stuff out. I just write it out naturally. And uh, the pen style itself makes it look like this. I think it's nice. It really kind of adds a little bit of flair to what's otherwise a pretty dry list of chores. It almost makes me want to do some of my chores. I certainly enjoy drawing an X when I've finished something. So uh, this is a small example, but one of the nice little touches of this device, not only the ability to have this calligraphy pen, which I think just is a really nice add, but having easily uh, exposed the majority of the canvas through this hiding the system button option is really nice. Uh, Remarkable has that as well, but I think having this button down below is way preferable than having it up here, um, and just a really nice little feature. One of the things I've appreciated about using the Mini uh, over the past month. Okay, one last postscript comment. Um, around a couple of the issues that we just showed off, which is namely pulling down the drop-down tray, um, also kind of that stroke issue that we went over where there's a little bit of a delay upon initial writing, I reached out to Viwids about both of these and actually also threw in uh, an issue that a viewer uh, found, which is you can't use the annotate function with Kindle. Uh, so I asked about those three issues, and Viwids uh, basically said that the Kindle one should be fixed um, in an update at the end of the month, and the other two issues were also on the list to be fixed as well, although they didn't indicate a time frame for those. So just an FYI that Viwids is aware of the issues and will be looking to rectify that in a future update, but no timing on that. Okay, having said all of that, we are now ready to finally go into the final video, which is a full review of the device. Uh, that's gonna drop in about a week, and we're gonna go over all the pros and cons, where I think this fits in the marketplace, my general thoughts where I might be using the device going forward, um, and then we'll wrap things up. So I hope to see you there. Until then, see you next time.